Hi everybody, I'm Dave from Polypad and in this Polypad Pointer video, I'm going to share some ways to model exponential functions on Polypad. In this task, I'm going to roll all the dice and remove any sixes and keep doing it until there are less than 25 dice. And I might ask my students to predict how many rounds they think this will take. I'm going to share a number of ways and ideas to use this Polypad. Obviously, you um, can adapt this and scaffold it up or down depending on the entry point of your students. So here we go. I'm going to do a click and drag to select all the dice and roll them. And I get some sixes. I don't want to count them all. So I'm going to go to the action bar at the bottom here and click the tabulate button. And I get this table here that shows me I have 24 sixes. I'm going to go to the um, advanced menu at the bottom on the table. And I'm going to change the aggregation method from replace to time series. And you see, when I change it to time series, let me just zoom out and recenter a little bit, I see this first time I got 24 sixes. So now in round zero, before I started, there were 100 dice. After round one, I'm going to delete those 24 sixes, and 100 minus 24 is 76. So quickly now, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on all these sixes to delete all 24 of them. I like that all the dice are a different color, so I'm just going through and quickly, quickly finding all the one that are that yellow color of sixes. I'll hit delete. Oh, and I can clearly see that I missed one, so I'll hit delete again. And I have this table of... Um, the round number and the dice that are left. I'm going to click on the table and make a scatter plot here. So there's my graph. Let me make this, um, I'll make go up to 100 here. I'm going to change the scale of the y axis from 21 to 20. And I can see I have that point at 0, 100, and 176. I'll bring this down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to change the color of the table to purple so I see those points on the graph a little bit more clearly in purple. All right, so after one round, there are 76 dice left. I'm going to do it again. So I click and drag, I click roll again. And what's nice about doing this in time series mode, I see that in the second roll, there are, are 17 sixes. So in round two, if there were 16, that would get me to 60. So 76 minus 17, must be 59. I enter that in and I see the point in the table. Great. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to click on all these sixes. I might ask students here to make a prediction as to how many rounds they think it'll take to get to 25 or less. Uh, maybe I'd be, I uh, could have them make a prediction on their paper, on Polypad, however you want to run this activity with your classes. Now I, I'm going to try to make a model here that's going to predict how long it'll take to get to 25 dice or less. And it seems like these points are in somewhat of a straight line. So maybe my first thought is an equation like y equals, let me just make this bigger here, all right? Uh, y equals 100 minus, seems like I'm removing maybe on average 20 dice every time. So maybe it's 100 minus 20x. So I'm going to attach this to the chart here. So let me just show you how I'm doing this. I clicked on the equation. I added this with the equation editor at the bottom. If you add it with, with the text box, this blue arrow is not going to appear. So it's important that you do it with the equation editor. And then I get this blue triangle, which is the start of like a wire or a connector. And I can attach that to the graph. So there we go. That actually seems pretty good, right? It seems to model that nicely. So now maybe I think I'm going to get to 25 around round three or four. You might already know where I'm going with this, but so far I'm predicting it with a, um, a linear equation. And let's see how it goes. So I'm going to click all these and roll again. And this time I only got 11. All right, so let me add a row to the table. And after three rounds, 59 minus 11 is 48. Well, that doesn't look great on my model. But first, let me delete all of these 11. Again, I'm holding down the Shift key 
to select all these sixes at once. I think that's all 11 of them. There we go. All right, so maybe I want to adjust this 20. Uh, I just want to show you how I can do that with a, um, a slider on Polypad. So I'm going to go to the, to the sidebar menu and click on Tiles. You can see all I have available on this Polypad are the coordinate axes and tables and the variable sliders. So I'm going to add uh, a slider to the canvas, a slider of A here. And now let me close that. And I want to set this slider as a range from, let's just go 0 to 30. All right, so now I can move this slider. There isn't anything happening in my graph yet because this is 20. I want to make this A. I'm going to do Shift 8 to do the, the dot for multiplication. And now when I move this uh, slider, the graph is changing. So maybe it's something like that. 18.5 might be on average. I, I'm removing 18 and a half sixes every time. Let me roll it down. Oh, this time I only got nine. All right, so let me delete. Oh, first, let me add it to my table here. All right, so let me do four. And 48 minus nine is 39. Oh, that is making this graph not look as great. Maybe it's something like that. First, let me delete all of these nine. And at some point in the conversation with students, you might want to talk about how it seems like the number of sixes is going down every time. First, it was 24, then 17, then 11, then nine. And obviously, this would depend on where you are in your conversation and learning about functions with students. But this function, it's assuming the same amount of sixes are being taken away every time. And as we do more and more um, like rounds of this, that number is going down. So at some point, you might want to introduce a exponential function here. So let me make this one bigger. I'll make this uh, blue. And so here I'll do y equals 100 times 5 6 raised to the x, right? And so here's a function where we started with 100, uh, and each time we're doing it, 5 6 of the dice are left, right? So a 6 should come up 1 6 of the time. Those are being removed. So what's left is 5 6. I can attach this to the graph, and I see that that is, like, not very aligned to the dots, right? I am removing more sixes than we thought. That first round of 24 was a lot of sixes, which is nice, right? Sometimes you're going to get more or less sixes than you might expect. Let me do it again here. And round five was only five of them. So I could add round five is 39 minus five is 34. Let me remove all of these sixes. All right, there we go. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to give myself a little bit more room. I'm going to move this down the canvas so I can add one more. But my question again was, how long until they there are 25? I'm still not there yet. And if I adjust my slider to something like this, I'm trying to, it doesn't feel good about those points, right? Maybe something like that. 25 might be around four and a half. Here, I can extend the graph going this way a little bit too. 25 is going to be around like round seven. So let's see. I'm already at round six and we're not at 25 yet. So let's roll it again. Here we go, roll. And ooh, we got six this time. All right, so now I really need to move these out of the way. I like how easy it is just to move things around the canvas as I'm adding. Um, more and more rows to my table. So 6, 34 minus 6 is 28. So there's another data point, All right? Let's get rid of these. I'm going to finish it off until I get below 25, right? And here, again, a good conversation. Which model seems to be doing a better job of making this prediction? I could try to do something like that. That doesn't feel good, right? Um, and if I'm doing this in a class of 25 students at any point, I can, I can stop the activity. I can have students share what's on their graph. This might just like be one student, but if all students are doing this, 
uh, especially if, if I'm doing this inside of Desmos Classroom, where I can pace and pause, anonymize students, and share up on the projector all of their Polypad canvases. It's a great opportunity to have that conversation about who had something that is less than 24 here. How does that graph look different than the graph that I have um, where I got 24 sixes in that first round? There's a great video in our uh, Polypad pointer section on using Polypad inside of Desmos Classroom. Here, I'm just doing it on Polypad in this video, but go check that out if you wanna do this inside of Desmos Classroom. Here, I'm gonna roll, if I can get below 25. Uh, I got two that time. All right, so now let me zoom out a little bit more and move all of this down the canvas because I feel like I'm gonna do one more at least to get it below 25. So now I can add this is seven. Round seven was 26. And now it's getting closer and closer to, um, to the exponential function, right? So let me get rid of these two. All right, delete those two. One more. Let's see, and I'm gonna roll this again. And this time was six. All right, so now we have done it. It took eight rounds. Oops, I did eight here by mistake. I don't want it there. I want that in my table, eight. And 26 minus six is 20. So after eight rounds, I got to below 25 dice on the screen. Let me just delete all of these sixes to complete the activity here, right? And so it took it, it took me eight. We could hear from all the students in the class how many it took them. We are seeing here that any sort of, of linear function doesn't really do a good job of modeling like what's happening in this situation because as the total number of dice on the screen goes down, the number of sixes that I'm rolling is getting smaller each time. Certainly there's uh, I got a six and then a two and a six, but compared to the numbers I was getting at the start of this activity, it's much smaller. So this is a good example of an exponential function. Again, a lot of ideas here. This was just a quick, uh, a quick video to show you how the dice and the table and the sliders and the equations and the graphs can all function on one canvas for students as they explore exponential functions. Uh, encourage you to share in the comments how you can take these ideas and adapt it and modify it into your teaching for ways that make sense for you and your students. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it was helpful.